for watching Henry AI Labs. This video is on Code Deep Neat, a technique for evolving deep neural networks, scaling up the Neat algorithm to evolve large convolutional and recurrent neural networks. This is a part of the September theme on Henry AI Labs of AutoML neural architecture search and hyperparameter optimization with a focus on neuroevolution techniques, using evolutionary algorithms to optimize either the weights of neural networks through an optimization technique that doesn't rely on backpropagation or using evolution to design neural network architectures and optimize hyperparameters. So designing neural networks, usually you will use something like this in Keras where you define a model and then you throw some layers at it and then you sort of see how it performs. Maybe you want it to get through each uh, training epoch faster so that you can uh, get a quicker sense or maybe you think it needs more complexity, it's overfitting. So you might say things like add more convolutional layers, should I increase the dropout probability, add or remove filters like 32 up to 64, should I change the progression of filters, maybe this first convolution goes 32, 64, 96, and then should I add skip connections, so maybe I shortcut connection this one to a later convolutional layer. And then as you design really advanced neural networks, the layers of move from just a convolutional layer to these uh, really intricate microarchitectures. So the first thing that we'll discuss when talking about neural architecture search and neuroevolution for simultaneously uh, macro and micro architecture design, which is the idea of code deep neat, we'll first break down what it means macro and micro architecture design. So macro architecture is, is described in this image. You have the input image and then it will go through this predefined type of cell repeated n times, then this type of cell, and then again the same one repeated n times, and overall it has this structure of three normal cells all repeated the same amount of times and a reduction cell. This is the space used in the uh, NASNet neural architecture search space. So the micro architectures describe these cells. So inside of the normal cell consists of something like this where it might clone its input twice, pass this to an average pooling and a max pooling, uh, concatenate this, send it to a five by five separable convolution, which is you know, attached with what happens to this in a separable three by three convolution. And overall, this forms the input output mapping in this normal cell or reduction cell. And then these micro architectures are stacked on top of each other several times to make up the overall deep neural network structure. This image here shows the overall structure of macro and micro architecture design. A macro architecture is designed, and then in this example, a normal cell is repeated, say, four times, so it looks something like this. And then each of these normal cells are designed in a micro architecture design. This theme is also evident in SqueezeNet, one of the popular examples of designing really small convolutional networks that still achieve high accuracy. And in the paper, what they do is they handcraft their micro and macro architectures. Their micro architecture cons consists of these squeeze and expand layers. The squeeze layers have less filters and only one by one convolutions, and the expand use you know, more uh, filters and the addition of the three by three convolutional filters. And then they structure it, and so this would be considered a fire block and they structure it in this way. So they take the input convolution and then max pool to reduce the spatial complexity. Then they stack three of these fire modules together, things like this, and then they max pool and do it this. So this macro architecture is defined and then the fire cells like this are searched for. So code deep neat is a way of combining the blueprint, which is the macro design with the uh, micro architectures, the modules. So the way this works is the blueprint defines the connection of the network and then each of the connections uh, will point to a member of the module. So see this maps to one, this maps to two, and overall I think they could have picked a better example to show that these can be different structures, but you would overall, one would be, see this structure here would be sampled from this, and then this structure would be sampled from this. So NEAT is the original algorithm, a neuroevolution of augmenting topologies. So to extend NEAT to deep NEAT, Basically, you take this idea of evolving the individual neurons and extend it to evolving the layers. So you go from neurons to layers. The NEAT algorithm focusing on evolving deep neural networks by their individual uh, neurons, really not uh, deserving of the title deep because they're not very big networks, works really well for low dimensional input tasks like cart pull balancing, where the input is the position of the cart relative to the uh, lower and upper bounds of this uh, horizontal plane and then the angle and velocity of this uh, pull is trying to balance by moving the cart left and right. However, things like image recognition, audio recognition, and you know text classification, this requires more complex networks to handle the high dimensional input. 
So the neat algorithm of evolving individual neurons just won't scale up to this problem. So therefore, going from neat to deep neat, you replace the neurons with layers and basically use the same algorithm, initialized with minimal complexity, use historical markings to align genes for crossovers, and then speciate populations using a similarity metric so that they only compete within their fitness and you live, limit evolution to each species. So speciation, it allows the networks that are trying to design more complexity to not be immediately penalized for it and allow them to develop it and either they make it or they don't but they don't have to complete with the, compete with the entire population as a whole all at once. So the nodes in deep knee, each node, each node contains a table of real and binary value hyperparameters shown in this table. So things like the number of filters in the node, the dropout rate, the initial weight scaling, kernel size, and whether it's a max pooling layer or a convolutional layer. In addition to the hyperparameters that define each node in the deep knee chromosome, or each layer in the deep knee chromosome, the genotype also encodes global hyperparameters applicable to the entire network. So example, things like learning rate, momentum, and then miscellaneous data augmentation parameters are applied to the entire network and encoded in the same genotype used for fitness evaluation, mutation, and crossover. So then the idea of cooperative coevolution or co-deep neat is to include the macro and microarchitecture. So the original deep neat would just design this blueprint and these would be either convolutions or max pooling with the more specific details defined by the hyperparameters specified on each node. So what CodeDeep Neat does is it keeps this blueprint and it has the uh, it has another population that is these sub modules or you know little like small deep neural networks that process just this portion of the network, and then they're sampled together to form the overall assembled network. So CodeDeep Neat, two populations of modules and blueprints evolve separately. Uh, the blueprint has nodes that contain pointers to the module species, and then in evaluation, they're assembled together and their uh, fitness is evaluated based on the average fitness of assembled networks in which the blueprint, I meant not the blueprint is always the same, on which the module is included in. So they experiment the code deep neat algorithm on the CIFAR 10 dataset. This contains 50,000 training images, all size 32 by 32, classifying them into, ta into categories such as dog, cat, airplane, and truck. So they use a population size of 25 blueprints, macro-architecture designs, and 45 modules, micro-architecture designs. They use 100 CNNs assembled for fitness evaluation in every generation, and probably one of the most surprising details of this algorithm is that each network is only trained for 8 epochs before fitness evaluation. And then overall, in their paper, they use 72 generations of this evolution. So overall, the computation required to replicate the CodeDeep experiment would be 8 epochs times 100, so 800 epochs times 72. So in the end, this is the network that they find using their code deep need algorithm. This is the uh, macro structure, and then when you decode it, mapping this to this, this to this, it ends up looking like this. And I think they made a mistake in their diagram, although I'm not sure, because they did uh, number all the modules the same when I think they meant to have maybe like, uh, I don't know, like three, four, three, uh, five, four again, and then maybe three. You can see here how they look similar. But so again, when they uh, have this final network, they train it for 300 epochs, much different than the eight epochs used for uh, the evolutionary algorithm and fitness evaluation. And using this, they achieve a 7.3% error rate. So because only limited training can be done during evolution, not surprisingly, the final solution by CodeDeep uh, trains very fast. It gets to a high accuracy very quickly because this is sort of what the evolutionary algorithm is making it optimized to do. Some interesting characteristics about the CodeDeep algorithm are mostly the eight epochs used for fitness evaluation, because only using eight epochs for training a deep convolutional neural network will, will really not result in convergence of any kind, especially, well not especially, but even on CIFAR 10 with small images and not that much data, it still won't result in a good, uh, you know, a good indication of the future performance. So one technique could maybe be to have a regression model that could predict the eventual fitness taking in information about the epochs, the complexity of the network, and maybe learning some kind of relationship in this way. Maybe also weight sharing could be used such that the networks aren't all trained from scratch, hyper networks which might predict their initializations, or maybe using a pre-trained network, and then you do something called a network morphism. And what a network morphism is, is it's a translation of one network to the topology of another network while preserving its functional similarity. So, I would, might translate, uh, say, a five-layer deep network with some width into an eight-layer network with maybe less width, 
and I would uh, use this network morphism to preserve the functional similarity between the two networks. So maybe this could be used to initialize the network such that you're not training them eight epochs from scratch necessarily. So and then another idea is just the skill with computation, having more, com like this algorithm is perfectly, you know, ready in line to have more computational resources in order to scale up. Thanks for watching this video on the Code Deep Neat Neuroevolution Neural Architecture Search Algorithm. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and artificial intelligence videos, and particularly stay tuned for more videos on neuroevolution for AutoML neural architecture search and hyperparameter optimization for the month of September. Thanks for watching.